In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of infinite mercy, you renew the faith of your people by the yearly celebration of these 50 days. Stir up in us the gifts of your grace, that we may know more deeply that baptism has cleansed us, the Spirit has quickened us, and the blood of Christ has redeemed us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today is the is Wednesday and the fifth week of Easter. We're over the middle uh, bit of these 50 days. Um, and the church is looking forward to Pentecost, the time when the Holy Spirit is poured down upon us, but also beginning to imagine um, what it means to live uh, after the resurrection, what it means to live as part of the body of Christ. And in that time and in that context, the church gives us uh, today's gospel reading from the Gospel of John. This is from the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. He is the true vine, he tells us. Jesus Christ is the vine, and we are the branches, and it's important to get that order, that relationship right, that he's the vine, and we are the branches growing out of him. It might be easiest to understand why getting this right uh, matters if we can think of a couple uh, of cases or what this might mean when the relationship gets switched, when what should be the vine becomes the branches and what should be the branches become the vine. I think of something um, in some ways as trivial uh, as sports. Um, uh, not not uh, sports that kids play, but uh, professional sports. So, um, you know, how much is determined uh, in sports, not by the sport itself or the joy it brings, uh, the athleticism of players and various kinds of athletes, but by money. Um, sort of practical ways, right? Like changing the game so that there are more uh, runs, I guess, uh, in baseball, for example, uh, to get the get the scores up and make it more interesting, whatever. Um, or even, uh, you know, I think of how long did Wrigley Field go without uh, lights um, but because they couldn't broadcast night games. Uh, they ended up putting lights in. Uh, so that, again, baseball could make more money. Major League Baseball could make more money off of the sport. Uh, 
of baseball and and even um maybe more deeply again you think of baseball teams or football teams or whatever um, basketball teams um how much do we really root for teams who are playing uh and how much do we just root for uh, the uniforms they're wearing um when the team the team uh, members uh, the players are shifted around and moved around all the time uh, and again it's about um, what's a better chance of winning what's a better chance um, the, the more wins we get the more money we make and that kind of thing and so much is determined by by money you could do the same thing with a lot of things like um, movies for example uh, how many uh, smaller movies are even allowed to play for any length of time uh, in the movie theater if you're not making a billion dollars you're not a successful uh, movie at this point and uh, maybe that doesn't matter if you think about movies as entertainment uh, but if you think about movies as one of the most important art forms potentially that we have um, it's, a, it's a big deal because what it means is there are a lot of great pieces of art that are not uh, available uh, for most people to experience or see um, so how much is driven or not um, in that art form by the industry of that art form ultimately again by money in both those cases uh, what should be the vine either um, again the uh, the athleticism you know the gifts um, of, that God gives these folks um, to play and to uh, perform in that way um, and, and by the way the using of those gifts is to glorify God um, so that should be the vine in sports, um, the, the beauty, the art uh, of movies should be the vine um, in that uh, in that arena. Uh, but in both cases, and, and, and the money that comes should be branches. But in both cases, the money um, becomes the vine. And then if it happens to come out and be a beautiful movie, that's a nice branch. Um, but it doesn't really matter how good the movie is as long as it makes money. Um, <clears throat> same thing uh, if we get to see sort of amazing things and and um, sports and, and people glorifying God by how they use their their bodies. Um, that's nice, but it's just a branch, um, and it really only matters in as much as it makes sure that 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 industry makes money. And maybe that's just what we should expect. Um, in a world dominated by uh, by capitalism or uh, by what Christians call the God Mammon, um, maybe and maybe in these cases it doesn't matter that much. Maybe they're sort of trivial. I th I think it does, but maybe um, I'm just being a little sentimental and not realistic uh, when we're talking about movies and sports. Um, But the same thing is going on in places where uh, um, even if you're not interested in those two things, uh, there, you still should, we still should probably have some feelings for um, uh, healthcare is a great example. Um, what's the vine and what's the branches in healthcare uh, between making sure that people have good healthcare uh, and making a profit? I mean, again, if you put it that starkly, it seems like it should be obvious, right? That the point of a healthcare system is to provide good healthcare. That's the line. Maybe if you make a profit, that's the branch. Uh, but that's not the world in which we live. Um, right now, what it's about um, almost completely um, is making a profit. And the people who are in the system may desperately want it even to be something else. But it's almost like the system itself can't let it do that. What's the vine and what's the branch? In that case, it's not just sort of sad or a loss of something sentimental or a loss of something that's sort of extra. Again, I'm not saying that um, art is extra. I, I was a fine arts major. It matters to me. Um, but even if you don't go there, it's hard to argue um, about that way in healthcare. That's not just sort of a sad thing or, or a loss or something that um, is a little more uh, 
esoteric. It's a, an immediate, urgent matter of life and death for people who are underinsured and uninsured. And boy, are we getting a sense of this um, with what's going on in the pandemic. Um, having healthcare uh, be a for-profit thing um, and having it also tied to our um, our employment, which again is such um, uh, a crazy idea in so many ways. Um, so we're feeling it like in, in a life or death thing. What's the vine and what's the branches? It matters to get straight the differences between vines and the branches in so many things. And so when I pull back to the uh, to the church itself, there was a time not that long ago um, when mainline churches like the Episcopal Church uh, had a particular, uh, I would call it a temptation, um, that it was prone to give into. I think it's a temptation we still have and still want to give into, uh, to allow ourselves to fulfill some role for society. Um, so, for example, families would bring their children to the church, uh, to Sunday school. Um, so they'd learn how to sit still in church and learn how to be nice in Sunday school. So they could get used to dressy clothes, um, learn how to be polite, um, uh, learn how to uh, have relationships with um, people that they might not otherwise have relationships with of different generations, that sort of thing. Um, and so they'd get all of that, they'd get this kind of training about, you know, how to be uh, a good, uh, polite uh, citizen. Um, and then maybe a few prayers so sort of put on top of that that they might learn. And in that way, the church would, would serve uh, a sort of practical function for the society. The church would be helpful. Again, I, I think we still actually want this, um, but uh, society is becoming more and more less, uh, more more and more uninterested in us, uh, and so we long for it. And some of our sense of loss is about a loss of that, of our understanding of that place uh, in society. It, maybe in some ways we um, try to hold on to this, not in that sort of more central thing, but. Again, maybe as the as the add on, as the icing on the cake to life, where um, religion, Christianity, can become a matter of some self fulfillment, or or make us uh, feel a little better about some things, or help get our lives on track. Uh, so again, um, be helpful, um, and you know, I, I guess it's okay if some of these things are are happening. Um, but do we really think that the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, uh, became incarnate, uh, you know, took flesh, took flesh and blood uh, in our world and, and healed people um, and drove out the moneylenders from the temple and raised the dead and proclaimed good news uh, to the poor and gave sight to the blind and then ultimately suffered? died and then rose again on the third day so that we could raise nice, polite, well-mannered kids, uh, make them good citizens, um, learn ourselves how to be good citizens and help us to get our sort of affairs in order and to, and to feel better, to feel good. We think that's what that was about. I am the vine and you are the branches. Is the church um, growing out of the vine of Jesus Christ, or is it growing out of the vine of our society, of our culture, of what CMMR um, tends to call empire, and just being branches of that society, branches uh, of that culture? It's important to get that relationship right. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Well,